Hey guys, I'm Brian. And I'm Terry. And welcome back to the Forest Farm Project. Today we're at Terry's old house again and we're going to be gluing and installing some face frames. And that's what we're going to do. All right, let's get to it. Yep. So we've pulled out a top cabinet and a bottom cabinet to show you guys and talk about a little bit. And these cabinets are going in on the right side of this top cabinet is going to be a wall. Of course it mounts to the wall and then there's going to be a wall coming back at you to the right forming a 90 degree angle. On the left side of this top cabinet will be the window over the kitchen sink. And this bottom cabinet goes under this top cabinet so it has a wall on its right side. On its left side it's going to have the sink basin. So when you line up with cabinets or with empty space that's when you need to start thinking about your overhang on your face frame and how you want to position it on the cabinet before you install it yeah I've, in the past looking at cabinets and not really looking in, in detail i would have thought this face frame is going to line right on the edge of this cabinet side but it doesn't you want a little overhang even if you saw the edge of this which on this particular cabinet you're going to see this side. Nope, this that's, side. That's the top. Oh, this is the top. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to see this side. Just a little bit. So we're going to leave about a sixteenth of an inch yeah. reveal there. It helps hide this edge as we've said in a previous video. If you try to line this edge up with the side of this panel, there might be a little bit of wonkiness there and it might not look as pretty. If you yeah. leave a little bit of an overhang, then it hides any deviation unless you really get there and close look you know close yeah. sheet goods are not perfectly flat there's going to be some deviation in that and with that lined up exactly at the edge you're going to see that little bit of deviation it's going to look horrible exactly and hold this just a second yeah I'll show some so as we said this cabinet you got it no <laughs> so this cabinet is going to be obviously on the back wall back here and there's a wall coming this way well hold that up there so it don't fall yep walls are not always perpendicular they don't, they're not always square sometimes they fold in a little bit sometimes out a little bit they're not always built perfect so you need to measure that and kind of or at least evaluate is my wall going to have a, such a wide angle there really bad build that i need a wider face frame that sticks out here further to accommodate for that or it might be curved in and then you you might have a serious problem with the corner of your cabinet back there. You're going to have to figure out how to make that work out. But anyway, for our condition, we're going to have that 16th overhang. That's going to leave us, what do you got over with there, 16th? 16th overhang, we're going to have about, uh, a, quarter inch about a quarter here. inch on the right side of the cabinet. So that gives us enough room with the taper in our corner to allow for this face framing cabinet to butt up nicely. Exactly. And then uh, we'll bring it back down where we can look at this. Yeah. Next thing to consider is on the top cabinets, you're never going to see the top of this, how it meets with the top not, of the cabinet. Not with our situation. Because we're going to have, if this, this is the face of your cabinet, this is a ceiling up here. We're going to have a crown mold. And our cabinets go all the way to the ceiling, less a half inch. Well, we're going to have this crown mold that's going to hide, as you can see, a couple inches of, and this isn't crown mold, obviously, <laughs> but... Our well, crown mold's going to hide the top of the cabinet. So if, for some reason, our face frame was a little bit off, it's going to be hidden. Right. So uh, you don't have to worry about that being off. But it is important to get that bottom straight if you want yes. your cabinets to look good. So we need to make sure that this is flush with this bottom precisely then get our sixteenth of an inch gap and whatever's left that's what we've got which it for us is working out to be a quarter inch yeah it's working out perfect yep however on the bottom cabinets yeah pretty much the same condition side to side but on this bottom cabinet uh, we're still gonna have the, this is this will be under the we're top have cabinet wall here. over here that side's gonna be sink basin right so we do need a little bit of a reveal we on both a, sides we need a quarter inch on both sides right this accommodates for the wall if you leave a little uh, you want a quarter inch between cabinets so you have room to line them up properly right in case there's a little crook in the wall or something or you things aren't just working out you got some some room to work with yeah and on these cabinets you, you don't want to line the bottom up because if it's a little bit long and that top sticks up, that's going to throw your countertop off. So on the bottom cabinets, line it up with the very top, get it good and flat and square. If you have a little bit 
off on the bottom. Unless somebody lays on the floor and looks up under that little four inch or three inch, three and a half inch toe space, you're never gonna see it. Yeah. So if there is a problem, you'll never see it. Yeah. So just make sure the top's good and flat and things are square, you're good to go. That's it. So let's install one. All right, let's do it. Shall we? Let's shall. <laughs> so now we gotta nail these face frames down, but first we want to glue them. So we don't do this every day. So we want to make sure we don't miss. We're going to draw a line down here that we're going to nail on. So first, this is the size of the side panel. You want to find what's one half of that. Add to it the distance that this overhang is. And I've done all of that. So I'm marking that on this face frame. And I'm going to mark that face frame where that meets on this sideboard here. So once I take it off and glue it, everything will be ready. Now, I'm going to make this line and carry this line down the face frame. And I'll know that that's where to nail. It helps put a clamp on that face frame so it don't slide around like we just did. <laughs> We're getting in a hurry trying to get this video done. Alrighty, I gotta do the same thing over here. So let's get some glue on it. Remove that clamp. I'm just gonna move this out of my way a minute. Alright, we're gonna put a little bead of glue on here to help adhere, adhere this cabinet and keep it in place once it gets nailed down. I'm not going to go real heavy. Straight line, man, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. I've been having some long, hard days. We've had a lot of things happening. Heat system went out. Our buddy Bill came over and fixed that up for us right quick this morning. Thank goodness. Well, it didn't go out. It just, it, it wasn't real. being efficient. Yeah, it wasn't real happy at the time, but needed a little free on put in it. And with it being 95 degrees, yeah. it was struggling. Now the fun part, I'm going to spread this out a little bit. Try not to get too much on the sides. We're not staining, so I'm not worried about the glue too much. If you were uh, staining, you would be not wanting to get any glue on the sides. Because if glue stays on the side, stain's not going to stick the same as it does, or at all. <laughs> it's not going to absorb. But with paint, if it does get on the side, we can sand it. And on the inside, it'll be behind the face frame. Not a big deal. Now we're going to put this booger back down. Try and get it fairly close so we don't have glue going all over the place. Align it with my little arrows. Get it close to square. Again, a little glue is not going to hurt anything. Keep a little rag around in case you get gluey. I'm just going to snug this in place a little bit. Flush it up on the bottom again. Make sure we're good and flush. We're on our marks. Everything looks good and straight down through there. Clamp this top end. If I can get a hold of it right. We're using 18 gauge, inch and a quarter brad nails to put these face frame on. And we'll putty the holes, paint it, you'll never see them. You could pocket hole jig it, but for our, since we're painting it, this is easy enough, good enough. This is what all the cabinet guys have been telling us to do. I think when we do ours at home, we're gonna actually do the pocket hole jigs when we do our new houses, but this'll work. I'm a little overkill. You may want to look make sure that your nails are not popping out anywhere. Every so often, make sure you didn't mess up. Just kind of randomly sticking the nails in. Again, you probably don't need this many. But I do. <laughs> Looking good over there, Brian? Looking good. Don't stand on your hose. It doesn't work very well that way. I know there's a nail uh, screw going here, here, and here, so I'm going to go between them. I kind of push down on the gun to help pull that wood together. Make sure everything's good and tight. Looks good. If you, these boards were set in good and flat, and they're straight. 
Sometimes you'll have a little bow in them. If you do, you need to clamp them where you're nailing just to hold them down tight. Probably a good idea to do anyway, but these are coming out good for us. Fortunately for us on this gun, from here to that little mark right there is center of a roughly three quarter board. So I don't really need to measure this one. I just stick it up here and pop them in there. This is where I might go real crazy because it's going to be covered up again by the crown mold. You'll never see it. Okay guys, in an earlier video, we showed you this one and one eighth inch top cabinet bottom spacer to show you how we spaced our uh, bottom shelf so that each cabinet would be uniform. We did one and an eighth inch because we have under cabinet lighting by Kitchler that's about an inch thick. So we want enough cabinet hanging down to hide that uh, light under there. So this same block is going to tell me where's the edge of this cabinet. And I'm going to lay it on here because it's the same depth there. So I can lay it up here and draw my line and this tells me that's the edge of that board. Now I can use my same offset on my gun and yow, looking good. All right, well that's about it. Uh, bottom cabinet's the exact same as the top. You just glue it, nail it, you're done. That's it. Just remember, the top cabinet, you want to shift any excess to the top because it won't be seen behind that crown mold up near the ceiling. On bottom the bottom cabinet, cabinet you want you, the top flush. You want the top flush so your countertop will sit down flat on top of your cabinet. Hopefully you got that built properly. Yeah. So same thing, you want to make sure, you know, which way do I want to shift this overhang on this thing. and. Yep. Depending on whether you have cabinets beside it or if you don't have cabinets beside it. It's not that difficult. It's not rocket science. Just take it one step at a time and you'll get through it. It may seem like a massive project looking at all those cabinets. It sure did for us. But yeah, and, and we took a long time building these things. Way more than it should. We could have probably done this in a day if we had a cabinet shop with all the tools. Yes. And, th and then one of our buddies actually said, we were telling him what we did. He said, you guys built about the same thing as I did. I did it in one day in my shop. I said, yeah, but you've got... The jigs, the squaring table, you've got everything. You've got a drum sander. He sits these in a drum sander after he builds the face frames. They go through it. It's flat level. Nail it down. He's done. His we drum sander costs $20,000. Right. <laughs> We're going to go out there with a orbital sander and sand the face all the way around and make sure it's nice and clean and it's smooth. That's all we've got. We're going to make do. And so, as you guys saw in the earlier videos, one thing that really made us take a lot more time was we were using the uh, job site saw we have. The Milwaukee, yeah. Great yeah. saw, and it did, a, did do, it did a good job, and it does what it's designed to do. We tried to make it do a precision, high-dollar uh, cabinet yeah. saw and, and, out of a little table saw. And we're going to do a video site. later comparing the saw that we now have, which is a Delta saw we got at Lowe's, and it does a great job for the money. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You, you can't beat it. It's getting it done. But it... It's an intermediate. It's not the job site saw. It's better than that. It's as a contractor as, saw, but right. it has a 30 inch fence. And that's where the job that's, site saw really struggled was having a 17 inch fence. It made doing this. There's cuts so you can't much. do on that. Yeah. You just can't do it. No. There's, the table's so small and it's perfect for out there on the job. That's what it's designed for. Yeah. But when you try to do big four by eight sheets of plywood and get a precision cut. It don't do so high. Yeah. It's <laughs> probably great for the Advantech. It was. It yeah. worked great for the Advantech. Yeah, it really did. It did. But, but that's flooring. It's, I mean, that's a subfloor. It's not precise. You're not you going to be looking at it every day. No, it's covered <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we're going to finish this one up. No need to watch us do it. It's the exact same process as what we just did here. Yep. So that's all there is to it. Coming up next, I guess we'll either be painting or putting backs on these cabinets. We got to get something done. Yeah. We got yeah. houses to build. <laughs> yeah, we got houses to build. We got to yeah. get rocking and rolling on that. No need to watch us sand. We're just literally going to take an orbital sander and sand away. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll catch you guys on the next one. Hope you have a good one. See you later.